As a former student at this school, I experienced um, what was called Trash and Show. It was last year, and uh, some of the younger students were making um, clothes and clothing and dresses from all kinds of rubbish you can think of, of plastic bags and I don't know, uh, plastic bottles, everything. It was, it was really interesting how uh, I can make a tire out of something you would throw away. So uh, this uh, BIS is an eco school and it's, it's uh, well, its goal is to educate people, make them more aware. So I thought I would tell you something about what interests me and what, also what I study. And it's sustainable development and a uh, very big part is fashion uh, of the sustainable development because as you all know, even boys uh, you wear clothes and you and I hope you think at least five seconds in the morning what are you gonna wear? Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just um, bear with me. I know it's the last presentation, but I try to make it as interesting as possible. So where did it all start? It? Um, Green is the new black. Probably all of you kind of heard this, and uh, it's been said by Graydon Carter, Vanity Fair's uh, editor, in 2006. But it kind of goes like further uh, ago the the whole sustainable fashion concept than 2006. He just said it then. Uh, it's uh, sustainable fashion is growing design philosophy and trend of. Uh, sustainability, like I said, and the goal is to create a system that could be uh, supported indefinitely in terms of environmentalism and social responsibility. So if there you can see the two kind of big concepts, the environmentalism, so probably you think of sustainable uh, materials and the social responsibility, that means that your clothes have been made by not in, not, uh, not in uh, you know, sweatshops. So then, um, in the past, uh, mainly environmentalism manifested in itself in the fashion world through a donation of certain percentage of money to charity. And uh, now it's kind of it's being reinvented and it's reintroducing eco-conscious methods. So that means what I was saying about the environmentally friendly materials and socially responsible methods. And, uh, uh, and the, in the picture you can see, uh, you all know Bono Vox, the YouTube singer, and he has, uh, he's been associated with uh, a lot of uh, charities. And uh, he has his own fashion brand, and uh, it's, uh, it's basically, uh, it's produced in Africa and they're trading the materials with them and uh, so they're helping them to develop kind of and uh, if, you, if you are interested then you can watch the video, it's really beautiful it's, it's an advertisement for Eden brand uh, Another trend from the past was that environmentally conscious uh, word clothing meant that you would buy things in thrift stores or second hand shops or donate used clothes for use or resale but now it expanded towards reducing the amount of clothing discarded to landfills. So, yeah, we now think what happens to all the things we throw away. Basically, a lot of it being clothes, and decreasing the environmental impact of agrochemicals in producing conventional fiber crops. That means the, the materials that we use for making clothes. So materials. There you can see a beautiful cotton plant. And uh, the factors when considering the sustainability of material is its re renewability and source of fiber, uh, process of how a raw fiber is turned into a textile, working conditions of people producing materials, and materials total carbon footprint. Uh, there are natural fibers, and as you can see, you have a lot of classifications of how uh, about textiles. And uh, does anyone, anyone know what's what's the Animal uh, in the picture. I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 in there. You can you can see it. Well, it's vicuna, 
And uh, yeah, it's really cute, that's why I put this there. <laughs> um, but I would like to uh, tell you something about silk, because silk is, um, uh, well, cotton is the, the problematic fiber, but silk would, some of you uh, maybe think of vegans, how they don't uh, wear silk, because it was made out of, uh, you know, the cocoons, and they kill them, and then they make the silk. But uh, you also have organic silk, and uh, that's uh, produced. Um, they leave the, they let the cocoons to, you know, I don't know the word. They just let them become butterflies and basically live their life, and that's how they make organic silk. So also vegans can wear it, and it's uh, very sustainable. Cotton. It's uh, natural fibers doesn't be mean that it's sustainable. Uh, well, accounts, it accounts for 50% of all clothing produced are made of cotton and it's most widely used clothing fiber. It's growing and processing is largely unsustainable. As you can see on the pictures, there are the pictures of Ara Lake and uh, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been drying up mainly due to uh, extensive cotton farming in the, in the area. And uh, there, it's manifested in that quote. For every pound of cotton harvested, a farmer uses up to one third um, pound of chemical and synthetic fertilizer. So, see, that's um, very bad. Uh, <laughs> and what also bad was I was really surprised by, and this is just scary, how uh, the cotton hulls are used as cattle feed. And the consumers are purchasing meat containing a concentration of pesticide. So, the, yeah, well, basically, when you're eating meat, you're also eating pesticide. But that's nothing new, but just know that it's also because of what you wear. I mean, if you wear cotton. Um, yeah, well, natural cotton is beige brown and it uses a lot of processing, and there's bleach added and other chemicals, so as to make it white and um, that's, that's the another unsustainable thing about cotton and uh, alicarp it's a it's a insecticide and it's second best selling although it's most acutely poisonous to humans and can kill a man with just one drop absorbed through the skin yeah uh, it's still used in 25 states and uh, also the US where Sixteen reported it in the groundwater. So imagine if, if it kills you with one drop, what, what happens if you get it in your water or your drink or something? Something probably worse than just food poisoning and diarrhea. <laughs> well, but uh, there's happening something about it, and uh, they, the countries who are using it must stop by December 31st, 2014. But you, but you know how many people will get poisoned by that? Uh, BT cotton. It's uh, probably maybe you heard about it, and uh, it's it's a GMO genetically modified cotton, and uh, <clears throat> it's resistant to pests and infestations. It's low. It has lower cost. It lowers the cost of insecticides. It lowers the price of cotton, it, and it assures bigger yields. But there are also concerns, and uh, well, mostly people don't think of it as a as a bad thing, but they're kind of scared because they don't, it's, we probably would need another generation to prove whether it's, it was bad or it's unsustainable. So there are some people who are concerned about this and uh, I found this on the internet uh, how some 125,000 Indian farmers are dead due to this BT cotton production. What I also found was that this was a hoax, and it's not true. It was just made up by people who are who don't fancy BT cotton. So you have a lot of interests coming and meeting, and as you can see, not everyone is interested in organic produce, but they also uh, have to take care of their alignments. Alternative fiber material. So organic cotton is uh, grown without the use of any genetically modif modification uh, to the crops or any fertilizers, pesticides, and other synthetic agrochemicals. And it's not harmful to the land. So um, I used a picture of um, 
uh, H&M's, uh, I think it's a cotton, I don't know, t-shirt or something. So you can, you can find a lot of uh, clothing made of organic cotton in H&M if you wonder where to get it. So it is another material and it's largely biodegradable and uh, it's, it has minimal impact on environment and landfills and it's not as durable as cotton or hemp but soft, elastic feel. As you can see in the picture it looks quite soft, really nice. And uh, so it's also known as the vegetal, vegetable cashmere, that's what I was talking about, very looks nice, for its light and sil silky sensation. And uh, soy fabrics are moisture absorbent, antibacterial, and UV resistant. And also, soy fi fabrics fell out of public knowledge during World War II because uh, then rayon, nylon, and cotton sales rose sharply. So there you can see a kind of I don't know, technological determinism blocking how they, uh, you know, soy is such a good uh, material, but it's not widely used because people just opted for cotton. And bamboo, who would, who would think that you can wear something made out of bamboo? I wouldn't, certainly. But it's considered sustainable due to the lack of need for pesticides and agrochemicals. And it's also naturally disease and pest resistant. And uh, also fast growing. And as you can see on the picture, it's uh, resistant to, uh, you know, the, the, the things that are really small and they uh, you are you are allergic to them, so it doesn't go to bamboo. So if, if you're allergic, then you should get something made of bamboo, and it's also it's a, a sustainable, sustainable material. Controversy about materials. Well, hemp, uh, as you can recognize, the leaf. It's uh, illegal to grow in some countries, uh, although it's a very good material. I don't get why they ban it. <laughs> You know, so um, it's the most sustainable choice as the raw material requires no agriculture, no manufacturing to produce. But there are other sides to hemp. Pet plastic. Pet plastic accounts for 12 percent of total amount of waste we produce. It means that there can be, you know, if you recycle all of it, that's like yeah, 12 percent. It makes uh, quite a large amount, and. Uh, I have a video, but I don't think there's time to show it. I, I will tell you what's happening in there. But uh, the other thing I want to mention is how Coca-Cola mm, did this uh, kind of brand of, of, they made a few t-shirts made of pet plastic, and it's really nice, you can check them out. Uh, well, how it is made of. I al always wondered how bottles get turned into t-shirts. So it's, what happens is that plastic, plastic bottles are collected, compressed and baled. They're shipped into processing facilities. They're chopped into like little flakes, as you can see on the picture. And they're melted into small white pellets. And then the pellets are produced again and spun into yarn, like fiber. And uh, then from fibers, you can obviously make textiles. So, very interesting. And it also had advantages, of course, because it's recycling. It, uh, you have more landfill space and they take less energy to make. Hair dye. It's very interesting how uh, how much water is consumed when you try to bleach, uh, well, not try to bleach, when they bleach or color the textiles so that you can have different colors, obviously. But the, in California, they came up with this uh, air dye technology and it all, it's uh, a technology basically which requires no water to to dye your clothing, so it uh, it's it makes the process of uh, making clothes more sustainable. Yes, and the conventional method uh, uses several dozen gallons of water for each pound of clothing. That's a lot compared to the one that is shown there, which air dye uses. And designers, well, fashion uh, it's it's all about you know wearing the latest stuff and. Uh, well, at least for some people it is. For some people, they just don't care. But uh, designers try to incorporate, uh, in, in, incorporate sustainable practices into modern clothing, uh, rather than producing heavy clothes, as they as used to be thought. Like, you're wearing eco-friendly stuff, so it has to be 
all hippie and you know not wearable to a conference or to I don't know a presentation. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, I'm wearing uh, from H&M. It's uh, it's made of stencil and uh, no stencil, tencel. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of it still, but getting there. So it's made of tencel and uh, it's a very sustainable material, but at least that's what they say. I didn't check myself. Yeah, you can, you can buy you can buy an H&M. I'm not here to make a for them. I'm thinking what other brands do you have here in Slovakia you can, where you can buy these kind of things, because you know, it's not such a big market here than it is, I don't know, in Britain or in more bigger countries. So, uh, back to the stuff. More expensive than clothing produced by, con like, conventionally. That's true. Uh, this wasn't so expensive because it was on sale, but you probably get <laughs> it more expensive than if you if you bought, like, regular, I don't know, uh, you know, those... You don't even get me started <laughs> on a Mila Tichova street. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have organic things. Uh, greenwashing is the conventional methods of uh, generating electricity like fossil fuels, fossil fuels. They negate the positive effects of using sustainable materials. So even though I am wearing tensile tensile dress, I may, it may not have been uh, produced in a sustainable way. So ma sustainable material is only a part of the success of wearing sustainable clothes. You also have to check when it's possible, how it was made. And sustainable fashion brands should be 100% transparent. So as I was uh, researching some of them, I found out a lot of the websites had like maps and you could basically track your piece of clothing, where it came from, where the material is from, where, where it was processed, who sewn it and in, un, under what conditions. And uh, yeah, it, it helps to make it more transparent and to the customers to see uh, how it was made. Sustainability is, it's, is a part of uh, sustainable fashion, obviously. And there's, uh, I was talking about mainly social and environmental impacts of fashion. And it also has the economic work economic realm to, to it and uh, it it makes the whole it produces additional realm of economic world profits the sustainable fashion business and uh, there are new markets for additional job opportunities continuous net flow of money in the economy and reduction of raw materials and also virgin materials so as you can see it's not only it it creates the whole picture of sustainability when you add the economic side of this but there's also controversy. As you may have seen in Brasla, there are those uh, humana, uh, they call it drop-off boxes. And uh, reportedly, they only give, uh, also humana is from Denmark, and uh, Planet Aid is, I think, uh, British or American, American, I don't know. And uh, they collect these clothes, and reportedly, they give only 11% of their social income to charities. So, I, w I wouldn't call that maybe a charity, but because 11% that's like a normal shop making uh, a nice uh, charitable, I don't know, one, one off thing and gives some amount of money to charity. So yeah, beware of who you help because you might not be helping the right people. Another controversy, the charities keep approximately 10% of all the donating clothing you see. They're Clothes with good quality, fashionable, and high value fabrics. They, and the 90% of clothing donations are to textile recycling firms. So, of those 90%, 70% of all donated clothes is used to use cloth to wipe oil off engine parts. They are shipped to Africa, and uh, well, this one, this article I read was about Nigeria and the oil industry there. So, a lot of ships with clothes end up there with our clothes which we donated end up there and yeah well there's a big oil industry so they use them there and 20% with uh, no value are ultimately sold in Africa well there 
And it's a market for African shoppers, apparently. They, they look a bit like this, the, the big bales of clothes and, yeah. <coughs> So green fashion isn't isn't an oxymoron. Oxymoron meaning that is it something that you cannot like the two words are they compatible? Can you can you make something? Uh, is it is it a, is it a viable concept? Well, what is, it says here, fashion is a deeply wasteful industry and a key driver of the entire consumption as self actualization paradigm that contributes to so it contributes so greatly to the destruction of limited resources. It's, I think this, uh, it has, it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Fashion is, is mainly about, you know, uh, creating new things and every year there's a, there's a new trend that you have to have and they, you know, the advertisement, it's a must have. So it is deeply wasteful, I would say. But there is a concept of green or slow fashion, and uh, it's see it maybe is not an oxymoron, and I will try to explain how it's how it can be married the two concepts of green and fashion. So uh, how is that an industry driven by disposable trends can and aesthetic whims can reconcile itself to an era of conservation? Well, this is uh, a table which I made myself, or at least tried. So here you can see how um, you can um, you can compare what fast fashion is and what slow fashion is. Fast fashion, everything's new. Slow fashion is recycled, and uh, it, it makes sense when you when you read through it. But for example, uh, I don't know, it lasts longer. That's a, that's a, that's a good one. Well, if you if you think more when you're buying clothes, what will last you more than I don't know uh, one season, then it, you make it more sustainable. And uh, also, what is recommended is that you invest in pieces that you can they are timeless, as they say, and I don't know a black jacket or something. So that's that's more sustainable, and it's a slow fashion. So I couldn't help myself but to include Ryan Gosling's picture in every presentation I make, but the here it actually makes sense because uh, there's an increasing number of Hollywood celebrities that have been associated with sustainable fashion. For example, Natalie Portman wearing the beautiful H&M white dress from, I don't know, was it, I think this last spring? Yeah, they made a whole line of sustainable fashion and she's wearing it. Giselle Bündchen as well and Ryan Gosling. Uh, and so now I would like to uh, say uh, present a few examples of how this could work. The uh, sustainable fashion brands. Uh, Pants to poverty. That's one of them. It's based in London, and uh, as you can see, people are very passionate about it. And uh, what it says on their website is: We work with thousands of farmers and factory workers in India to celebrate fashion as a beautiful tool to change the world. Well, so um, as you can say, uh, as you can see, they they are uh, they are ad addressing the the problem of the so, so, social so the social problem of producing clothes. So they are working with them. They're uh, collaborating, and uh, they are uh, en ensuring that they get they get them. It's like fair trade. They give them like. Good, good to conditions under which they produce the clothes. You can you can see the the advertisement later if you want. It's quite a lovely song than they're singing. I, I don't remember that. Chris and Couture. That's uh, that's another uh, that's another example. It's uh, it came came from Latvia and Estonia, and it's uh, the eco-conscious mindset with the brutal daily reality of post-Soviet prison life. Basically, what they did was uh, they, they made it possible for some uh, prisoners to invent and come up with their own motives and uh, they were inspired by them and uh, they were inspired by modest images and tattoos from Soviet and Eastern European jail life. So here you can see an, uh, again the, the social aspect of sustainable fashion, how they try to include all sorts of people from uh, the society in order to, I don't know, for the prisoners, for example, not to get institu institutionalized. 
Bottle Top is a fashion brand and they focus, uh, it focuses on quality, sustainability and local craftsmanship to generate employment in impoverished places by creating environmentally friendly and ethic ethically sourced covetable products. I was very excited, or I don't know, not excited, but it's it's very interesting how how can they how they can make uh, like bags off of the bottle tops. I, I wouldn't you just you know you don't think about it. You just throw it away as as you finish with the drink. But you know they they think about it as as a material that you can make all the final thoughts. So there's a beautiful tree hugger. Uh, panda, but she's too late, or he, uh, it's too late, <laughs> so um, don't be too late, and uh, my final words would be, sustainable fashion is not a trend, it is a way of designing the styles and positive future demands, we know, we now know better, we must act in that knowledge if we decide to be a species with worth inhabiting this gift called planet Earth, so uh, make sure you check out the, uh, you know, you think about what you're going to wear next and maybe take something from this presentation and I don't know, opt for organic cotton next when you're going to shop. That's all for me. Thank you.